On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome His Excellency Zoa Manuel Gonzalez Lorenzo, President of the Republic of Angola, and invite him to address the Assembly. Your Excellency Dennis Francis, President of the 78th Session of the United Nations General Assembly, Your Excellency Antonio Guterres, United Nations Secretary General, Distinguished Heads of State and Government, Heads of Delegations, Ladies and Gentlemen. It is with great pleasure that I take floor at this August Assembly of United Nations within a context where the world is facing a highly complex situation which requires this organization to strengthen its role and capabilities in crafting the most adequate responses and tackle the serious challenges facing the world. I would like to wish you to Your Excellency Dennis Francis all the best wishes during your term of office starting now as the President of the 78th Session of the United Nations General Assembly. I also would like to express my thanks to Mr. Antonio Guterres and you and Secretary General for the tireless effort you've been undertaking towards peace and development under very challenging circumstances. Excellencies, as I was not present at the 2022 General Assembly session, I did not have the opportunity to, on behalf of Angola and Angolans, to express our views and concerns about the problems faced by the world, which were exacerbated by the eruption of the conflict between Russia and Ukraine in that year. Despite of the great efforts made in order to create a more peaceful and prosperous world, we recognize that after 20 78 years of foundation of organization, it's not been possible to build a solid base of trust among nations in order to prevent the emergency of tension hotspots here and there that degenerate in open conflicts in Africa, Asia, Latin America, Middle East, and now in Europe, where it would be less expected to have a war of great proportions such as that one is happening right now. The management of interest at global level in matters of security, science and technology as well as resources in general terms where I highlight the strategic raw materials and energy sources do not yet meet the interests and expectations of different nations and peoples of our planet. It is therefore fundamental to do our utmost to promote continuously the respect and upholding of values enshrined in the UN Charter and in the international law so that we can correct the dangerous trajectory that the war had taken after the fall of Berlin Wall. In discussing the contemporary problems of international relations, we highlight the importance of uh, looking objectively the nature and origin of conflicts as well as the perspective of their resolution, upholding always the universal norms that govern relations among states. Excellencies, we have to recognize that the the gap between the developing countries and the developed countries is still an unacceptable reality because in some case there is no political will to overcome them. As consequence, we have difficulties in accessing financial resources and material resources that are necessary to implementing development projects as well as the conditionalities imposed in know-how transfer that become factors that delay the implementation of the sustainable development goals provided in 2030 agenda of the United Nations. I would like to welcome the call of the Secretary General on the reform of the global financial architecture and the stimulus of SDGs of at least 500 million 
dollars per year in order to face the emerging challenges. As they are not adequately represented in most of global governance institutions, the developing countries are not in position to express their views and make their stand prevail at appropriate level and contribute in formulating realistic solutions to their problems. This situation generates anxiety and frustration of the most vulnerable population who, by not seeing the expectations met, they become easily prone to negative and dangerous influences to the order and stability of their respective countries. Excellencies, over the past decade, Africa has witnessed transformations that governized changes with impact in the upcoming generations. Many African countries have resolved their conflicts, invested as much as they could in social and economic development, and have promoted the education of their citizens, making them more informed and ready to contribute to the economic and social development of their respective countries. Democratic transitions have become regular and essential institutions for consolidation of democracy have become more active and therefore more capable of giving support and solidity to the democratic conquest achieved in our nations. It is a record that should be highlighted and we are convinced that all must be done in order to prevent the return to models that uh, govern previous the advent of democracy in Africa. Nevertheless, the lack of perspective that is observed in many of our countries in social and economic fronts creates a fertile land for unrest and weakening of the recent democracies on our continent. Therefore, it is urgent and imperative that uh, real support is given to development through financing in favorable conditions for the construction of uh, power production distribution infrastructure as well as uh, water, roads, railway infrastructure, san basic sanitation, construction of schools as well as providing direct private investment on the African economy so that Africa can have a major share in the global economy. In Africa, we've been seeking ways that would help us get out of the current status, such as the initiative of establishment of the African continental free trade area with more than one billion consumers that constitutes an important boosting platform for the progress of the continent. International partners of Africa must believe and invest in our market because surely they are going to have a satisfactory return on their investment in the different sectors of our economies where they decide to invest. We would like to meet the expectations of the young Africans who are forced to try to realize their dreams out of the continent in contexts of adaptation which are almost always difficult apart from the high life risk many of them face on making uh, dangerous crosses through the Mediterranean. Angola has been as a booster of dialogue who, in our opinion, should not limit in political and diplomatic space, but it should include also a wide range of stakeholders, namely civil society organizations, enterprises and individuals and giving a highlight to the youth which is the true engine of transformations that we wish to achieve so that uh, we can ensure the progress of our nations. It is within this spirit that Angola decided to host the Pan-African Forum for the Culture of Peace in Africa organized in partnership with the African Union and the UNESCO whose third edition will take place in November this year in Luanda. The forum, also known as Luanda Biennale, constitutes a 
good platform for exchange amongst different cultures, religions, social models through interactive and constructive sessions aimed at identifying, promoting and diffusing feasible and inclusive models of peaceful resolution of conflicts on the African continent which could serve as a potentially inspiring landmark for other regions of the world. Excellencies, the Republic of Angola has been seeking to contribute with its experience in terms of peace building, harmony and national reconciliation to the resolution of conflicts that are striking the African continent with special emphasis with that happening in the Democratic Republic of the Congo where we believe that we will be able to build a base of trust between the warring parties that would contribute to slowing down the tensions in the Great Lakes region and lead us to so much awaited peace. These steps aimed at uh, containing the expansion of terrorism and other destabilization actions imply financial costs that our countries are not always ready to bear. Therefore, it can compromise the success of peace-building operations that are being carried out and topple down all the hope that is made around these processes. That's why it is essential for us to reaffirm the need of adequate, sustainable and foreseeable financing in the efforts aimed at fighting terrorism in the continent. Therefore, it is opportune to renew our call to the United Nations, particularly the Security Council for the use of fixed contribution for peace keeping operation mandated by the African Union. Up until relatively a short time ago, the Sahel region was struck only by actions of terrorist groups uh, helped by terrorism who have found a vacuum of power in Libya. They have spread to the neighboring countries. To this situation we add, which is already dangerous, uh, in almost the same region, a new wave of unconstitutional change of power came out, which is carried out by the military. These new powers should not be rewarded with the possibility of sharing with us the same political stages. Otherwise, would be conveying a wrong message which is contrary to the principles that we advocate. We are increasingly convinced of the existence of an invisible hand that is interested in creating instability in our continent, only concerned with expansion of their sphere of influence, which we know will not bring the necessary guarantees for the economic and social development of the African countries. The international community is concerned not only with the situation in uh, Sahel countries, in the Horn of Africa, in Mozambique and the DRC, as well as with the conflict in Sudan, which, uh, apart from the high le number of death, wounded people, destruction of infrastructure of the country, has caused a high number of uh, internal displaced people and refugees, and that has become one of the biggest uh, humanitarian catastrophes that the world has witnessed, whose consequences are felt in the neighboring countries. The world should not forget the suffering of the Palestinian people or ignore the need of enforcing the resolution of the conflict in the Middle East highlighting the Israeli-Palestinian conflict whose formula of two states living side by side peacefully has been found by the United Nations years ago without having any positive evolution whereby we are lacking implementation. The international community runs the risk of being accused as giving different treatment and privileged treatment to the conflict in Europe to the detriment of others. Uh, because they are in Middle East and Africa, whereby the one of Sudan is so deadly and devastating as 
that of Ukraine, but which receives m less coverage of international media and less attention of the big center of decision on global peace and security. In Europe, the war between Russia and Ukraine should deserve all our attention and urgency of putting it to an immediate end due to the level of human and material destruction that is seen there and also risk to escalate to a big conflict of global scale and its negative inf effects on uh, energy and food security. All evidences indicate that it is unlikely to have winners and losers on the battlefield. That's why we have to engage the involved parties to give privilege as soon as possible to dialogue and diplomacy, establish a ceasefire and negotiate a long-lasting peace, not only for the belligerent countries, but that would ensure the security of Europe and contribute to the global peace and security. Excellencies, over the past three years, we faced a great global challenge that was raised by the COVID-19 pandemic, which has demonstrated the importance and the need of solidarity among nations as base of facing and resolving the big global challenges. And this example should serve as a paradigm of our behavior in facing other challenges, mainly those that have to do with the fight against poverty, disparities among between the developing and the developed countries in the field of science and technology, which represent, as we all know, important and indispensable factors to boost development and well-being of peoples of our planet. Coordination and articulation among all nations of the world, which was the dominant tone in the process of fight against COVID-19, put into evidence the crucial role of the multilateral institutions. Therefore, we consider pluralism in international relations is the main safeguard of the efficacy of the actions that we undertake to resolve the big challenges affecting humanity at this time. It is true that in the perspective of multilateralism, United Nations have to empower itself in order to assume an effective role in fulfillment of its task and in imposing urgently the need of UN Security Council reform whose reform should reflect the reality of current times that is totally and deeply different from that reality right after the end of the Second World War. The Republic of Angola advocates therefore the need to revise the representation of different regions of the world in the Security Council. In this regard, as for the African continent, we advocate the Ezurini Consensus and the CIRTA Declaration, which established the need of giving Africa seats as permanent member of the Security Council with all privileges inherent to that post. Excellencies. The United Nations have been dealing along decades with a number of situations to which they have adopted a number of resolutions that are simply ignored and disregarded without any consequences to the protagonists. I therefore think it is necessary to reflect together on the need to seek creating mechanism that would strengthen the authority of the United Nations in order not to debunk, no weaken, weaken sorry, uh, the decisive role in the construction of efficient architecture of global peace and security to which all nations of the world should f be bound with strong sense of commitment regardless of their economic or military might. It is therefore opportune to highlight the importance of enforcing the resolution in force with regard to embargo 
on Cuba and the con prevailing conflict in the Middle East between uh, Israel and Palestine. One should recall that in 2021, I participated in this city of New York at a meeting of the Security Council with the purpose of discussing the issue of lifting uh, arms embargo on the Re Central African Republic. No progress since then has been recorded in this matter, which affects seriously the exercise of a fundamental right of countries of having their own national armies to ensure the defense of independence, sovereignty, and normal functioning of the institutions of the country. I once again reiterate the pertinence of putting this issue on the agenda of the Security Council of the United Nations so that a decision is made that will allow the Central African Republic to comply fully with their role as an independent state and and not having need to resort to hiring of foreign paramilitary forces for indefinite time. Excellencies, the Republic of Angola is chairing the summit of heads of state of the Organization of African, Caribbean and Pacific States, which gives us the responsibility to discuss some aspects related to that organization. The negotiation of the partnership agreement between the Organization of uh, African, Caribbean, Pacific States Organization and the European Union was concluded, whose signing ceremony will take place shortly, which will mark a game changer of cooperation tailored to the reality of uh, to the current reality and aspiration of member states of this organization. This important tool, which will govern the cooperation between the OACP and EU member states, defines the basis on which we are going to project actions in most various fields, with special focus on environmental sustainability, climate changes, human and social development, migration, and mobility. As Your Excellencies know, OCPS includes 79 member states from three continents, three oceans, and represents an enormous potential for cooperation for those who establish partnerships in priority fields for the member states that will generate reciprocal benefits. I seize this occasion to make a call to investors in order to look at the OACP countries as a safe destination with important advantages for their businesses. Excellencies, allow me once again to seize this opportunity to, in few words, talk about climate change issues that represent in current time the main concern of humanity, of governments and society of all our countries. International community should seek to comply within its reach. The pledges made in the two last edition of COP on environment funds so that at the next COP summit that will take place in the United Arab Emirates, this topic must absorb a meaningful part of our agenda so that we can discuss concretely on the need to implement the measures to be taken with a view to reducing uh, polluting gases, reduce deforestation, reduce global warming, and save our planet Earth while we still have time. Allow me to seize this occasion to, on behalf of the Angolan government and people to express our deep condolences to the authorities and peoples of Morocco and Libya for the loss of a thousand human lives and valuable national heritage as a consequence of natural disasters. 
our total solidarity goes to the families and beloved ones who feel the door uh, the pain of lo loss of their beloved ones thank you very much for your attention je tiens à remercier le président de la république d'angola de l'allocution qu'il vient de prononcer et je prie le protocole de bien vouloir accompagner son excellence I thank the President of Angola for that statement, and I request protocol to escort His Excellency. The Assembly will now hear an address by His Excellency. The I ask a protocol to escort His Excellency.